This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Okay, so that one I had to hold right under the plate and then just slightly to the right. Impact, top left corner. Don't know where that one went. Impact. Okay, so that one is truly at the base of the plate. The previous one I had trouble because sometimes with these Soviet holds when you have to hold at close range targets, if it's a human, you just come at the, the belt. But at these, they're because they're a smaller target, yeah. I don't know exactly where it is. And on top of that, the windage is also... And th those two impacts at the 200 were at the top. top okay, so I'll do that same thing at the... I would uh, use the same hold at the 250. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, left by about a quarter of a target, the top half of the plate. Impact. Impact. Nice. Three hundred. Three hundred. Hmm. Okay. Short by about a half a target, and you're on the right by about a full target. Okay. Okay. Good windage adjustment. You're still short. Impact. Just off the left edge. Just short. Impact. Okay. That's neutral. So that one was on the top quarter of the plate um, at 300. Interesting. Top quarter? You're holding at the top quarter? Yeah. Are you going to... Uh, wait, is there a sight adjustment you're going to do to engage out at distance? There's a 450 meter... 400 and 450 meter... 400 to 500 meter target that you just flip up. Sight? That's it. Okay. So should I just aim at the top of it at 350, you think? Yeah. Let's see Let's see if that works. Because the, right now it's on the P, the battle setting. Right, that's what I was asking. If you're already covering the target with it, how are you going to shoot it at the further distances? Uh, th that is uh, what the Afghans would say, Anshallah. Yeah. All right, 350. I'm on target. Uh, that was short by more than a little. Uh, didn't didn't see that one. Left side. Uh, oh, was that a hit? I heard a tink. Hi. Okay, that's better. It's up at the bar. Right edge. Impact. Windage shifted between the first ones to this one. Impact. So that last one... Do you I, feel it right now? Yeah, yeah. Wind's it's at the very 9 o'clock out of nowhere, yep. Yeah, it's at the very top of the plate that I have to hold. 
But but do you feel that the wind's gone from? Yeah. Yeah, I feel it now. Five o'clock to nine o'clock, just hitting us now. Yeah, because yeah. previously, um, I was pushing off to the right side of the plate, mm -hmm. and then those last two, I aimed, I put the plate in the very center of the crosshair. Got or, it. Not crosshairs, the front side post. Yeah. Okay. So that one was at the very top of the bar. So at 400 yards, shall I use the 400 to 500 meter setting? And then I'll aim at the base. All right, let's see what we get. Just underneath, perfect windage. Windage correction was good. You're just underneath the target, six o'clock. Not positive, send one more. No. I've lost these and I've got no vapor trail, no, no observation on any splash. I'm guessing you're high if I can't see any splash right around the target. Okay. Okay, just short, just underneath, six o'clock right edge. Impact. Maybe these are impacts that we're not seeing? High by about half a target, right by about half a target. Just under it, six o'clock. Uh, left edge. Okay, that was high left up at the... Just under it, six o'clock. I saw it from my eyes. Yeah, maybe. It might have just flexed just a touch. Man, these are just not hitting anything. I mean, I think that's two, though. Yeah, that is two. All right. Should we go to 450? Let's go to 450. Okay. This is no making it easy, my friend. No kidding. Yeah, short, short. Uh, full target short, right edge. Impact. Dead center. Uh, off the left edge, a little bit high. Short by like two targets. At the bottom right leg. Uh... Just off the right edge. Just underneath it. Six o'clock. Just over the top. Just short. Just short. Have we reached the limit? I, I guess, but I've shot the 500 yard target in the past before. For the viewer's sake, shall I just tag the 500? You can try. All right, I have no idea how many rounds are in the bag, but yalla. Well, you're just gonna hit it on the first shot anyway, so it's gonna be fine. Oh yeah, no big deal. Pushing it to the right. Yeah, wind coming just in at four o'clock. Impact. Not what? kidding. I mean, I mean, yes, of course, my friend. Yes. God wills it. God does will it. <laughs> so as far as that one goes, you see the, on top of the target, there's a black spot. On top of the target? Yes, on top of the 500 yard target. You see the shade kind of dips to the right over it. Yeah. I was using that shade as it bleeds over to the right as the actual aiming point. That's my reference point. Oh, very good. So I wasn't aiming at the target. I was aiming significantly on top of the target. Sure. For that hit. Sweet. Well, well done. Yes. Well, that was uh, easy peasy. 500 yard rifle. 
Good to go. And ladies and gentlemen, we shall see you at the debrief. So the crank off. The crank off. Probably one of the most iconic Kalashnikov variants that exists, would you say? Oh, yeah. Between the pop culture designations with Call of Duty, the original Modern Warfare, when we back when we were growing mm-hmm. up, having this as being one of the iconic guns, to obviously one of the most infamous terrorists in the entire history of humanity, mm-hmm. rolling with one of these in all of his promotional content. Josh, I've got to say, though, I mean... <laughs> He just proves that flexing on the pores in Afghanistan is exactly the same in this instance of... Flexing on the pores here in the U.S.? Indeed. Yes, indeed. So obviously the gun of UBL, the gun of Call of Duty, and one that I would say performed up to what we would have expected it Mm -hmm. was going to be able to do on the course. It's an eight and a half inch barrel 545. Yeah, and and 545 is a great caliber for shooting a distance from what we've seen in other runs but it's also not moving at its optimal velocity in this particular setup look at the sights too yeah very crude Mm -hmm. very rough i'm actually pretty surprised that you're able to connect beyond like 350 to be honest it's not easy um quite frankly i mean it's designed its category is a submachine gun in the Soviet arsenal, right? Yeah. People people have been saying that it's very difficult to connect past 100. I think I think you can go farther past 100. Yeah. Um, I mean, 100 seems like it's it's pretty short. I mean, 100 is ha- handgun hittable range and these, with a nine millimeter handgun. Yeah. So. These, these plates are sub sub torso size, so yeah. about C zone size. So definitely connectable on on yeah. humanoid targets beyond yeah. you know. The sights took a while to zero. Um, I will say that um, it, it took longer than the normal Kalashnikov. Like AK, the AK-74 that I that I zeroed at the same time as I zeroed this one, I did that in half a mag, mm-hmm. and I was you know yeah. ready for the course. Right. This particular one, it took me a couple magazines. Yeah. And then I had to true it on the course. A couple thirty-round magazines, not long mags. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's an iconic system. Um, it shot farther than I thought. I think we had issues at the 400 especially. It's where we started to really feel it. I had so much trouble seeing that target, Not to, not to mention, to be completely fair, like, it sucked trying to spot for this because the impacts, as we know from shooting 5.56 five, mm-hmm. out of short barrel stuff, and those were like 10 and a half or 11 and a half, 12 and a half inch guns. That's kind of hard to call because there's just not a lot of final energy or impacting on these plates. Mm-hmm. This was even harder. Like these were really hard to call hits on. And there were a couple that I'm sure I probably messed you up on as you were going. But now, So one thing that people rumor these things to have accuracy issues comes stems from the barrel. Uh, these... Arsenal SLR 104s run the old Soviet TDP. So they used, it's like a one in eight twist. We'll, we'll put down in the description if it's not one in eight twist, but it uses a, a, a longer twist. So essentially that barrel length is barely one twist. Right, so not enough, tw- not enough barrel to effectively stabilize with the twist rate that's, that's the what, that's the suggestion that's what people are saying because the soviets later on put it made it a one to six point three or something six point something mm. twist so it's so they increase the twist rate on it so the conventional rumor knowledge in the ak sphere in the Amer- and in the americas is that these arsenal 104 ur is running the old russian tdp can't hit anything past 100 well today we hit 500 with it, and I would wager to say, if we were able to put an optic on it, and I don't think an optic makes a rifle more accurate, I think a ri- an optic makes a rifle easier to spot and aim at targets. Right. Um, I think we'll see even more performance out of it. So, is it ideal for the 545? 
Uh, no. Probably not, right? Probably but not. In in its context, covering the one to three hundred sphere, um, is it a pretty good thing to hold on to? Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. Mm. The recoil is minimal. There's like there's no recoil to this yeah. thing. I'm trying to think of a situation where I would want something quite this small and quite that this compact. If you were flying a hind. Yeah, I was gonna say this is this is optimal for vehicle based stuff. Yeah. You know, I, from a perspective of if if I wanted a rifle caliber in a vehicle this is this is what i so, want so uh, are you are you suggesting that we should look into pdw's josh well i mean it, it certainly starts going towards that pdw concept it definitely feels like it it, it falls more into that realm doesn't it yeah. Yeah. yeah because it's not it's not necessarily shooting a pistol round that loses steam at 100 despite what people say yeah um but it's not a rifle round to cover all the way up to four or five hundred right uh, it's it's good enough for you to uh, fight yourself out of a situation mm -hmm. if you're, let's say, in the hills of Afghanistan and a pistol, a Makarov... Isn't going to quite cut it. Yeah, something quite... I mean, obviously, if I was choosing between this and a and a you know, subgun in 9mm, even a subgun, I would probably be selecting this in any sort of... Or, uh, Unless, non... unless unless concussion is a big thing, and, right? And this right. is one th one thing that that I think I, we'll, we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail later on. But a military PDW and a civilian nine millimeter PDW are different things. Mm -hmm. A military PDW being able to use be used around armored vehicles, helicopters, aircrafts are not the same as something that you're expected to shoot from a civilian thin-skinned vehicle. Um, it's not something that you would expect to all of a sudden to have to be using in very tight quarters. Um, as you might in a civilian-based environment. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, the, we're going into too far of a tangent, but... The one thing that sucks about this is if you're shooting it in a confined space. Yeah. And the concussion is something that you would feel. Oh, yeah. It's the same. It's not too dissimilar to touching off 10 and a half ARs if you're Western shooters and are familiar with doing that. Yeah. Like, it's in the same ballpark yeah, of Soft that. Soft doesn't use suppressors on their Mark 18s because it's a secret squirrel thing. <laughs> they use it because when you're clearing rooms with a Mark 18, and you don't have a suppressor, it is a horrible experience. Yeah, it turns out that kind of sucks. It's a horrible experience because it also hinders team-based communications. communications. Yeah. If you're trying to work, uh, if you're trying to run radios, if you're trying to shoot, move, communicate with your teammates, and you've just got a constant couple of concussions hitting you in the face as you're going mm -hmm. in, it hinders you working as a team. Yeah. So I would say in that aspect, these things are not ideal. Right. However... Right. Putting it into the 70s, the 80s, as a helicopter pilot, because they used to have holsters mm. on for Yeah, and I, and I know I don't want to go into too much detail here, because I know we're going to be working with um, somebody who's got a ton of expertise and knows a bunch of history around mm -hmm. this particular setup and its uh, use in the Middle Eastern regions. To flex on the pores. To flex on the pores. So... They're saying Happy New Year. Yeah. Oh, Chinese. hey. Go tell them to be quiet. Hi! Hello! 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 So instead of, instead of regurgitating some of the information I've learned in talking with him, maybe we, uh... We will. We pass that down the road and let him pick yeah. it up. Yeah. We'll see you soon, Miles.
enjoy arguing with other viewers on the internet on which rifle performed better on practical accuracy? Well, we have a solution for you. Go to our Patreon page and scroll down. You'll find the practical accuracy scoreboard where we have ranked and compiled all the data of all the firearms we have tested on the practical accuracy course. Furthermore, it's already separated into the different categories, so you can go back to your argument as quickly as possible. And whether you decide to support us via Patreon, subscription, or just a normal viewer, we thank you. Seven one six is Joe Knight six four six eight pack red con one green to green top copy over. Joe Knight six this is seven one six Roger over. One six Joe Knight one one pack 